Thanks very much, Fatia, for joining us. Could you tell us what were your main takeaways from the two-day symposium uh, and what Agta can do moving forward? To me, I take away maybe three things. Number one is the extreme and deep commitment of the representatives of the uh, Special Criminal Court from Central Africa, their commitment to actually pursue justice and accountability and the fight against impunity. That's one. The second thing is really to identify areas for potential collaboration with those representatives, either through the Africa Group on Justice and Accountability and or the YMO Foundation. And that is a good premise for us to have a good direction for our work. The final thing is not just the symposium, but the strategic planning discussions we had in the Africa Justice and Accountability Group, which is basically looking ahead as, as to what the program of work is going to be according to certain priorities. Priority number one is the Gambia, the second is the South Sudan. I think one highlight for me is that we were nicely moving and progressing or, or evolving towards looking at a lot more practical areas for us to engage than we've been over the past year and a half. For the past year and a half, we've been more reactive. And so statements on the withdrawal and this, important. But I think we need to be, to elevate a little bit our action and be more proactive. So the decisions actually to write a letter to the, uh, to the Gambia, to do the Sudan, is really a, a welcome decision that I personally value. And finally today was quite good for me to hear about the work done by the Chambres Extraordinaires, i.e. the trial of Hissam Habri. There was a lot of learning, but there was a lot of, um, shall I say, very beautiful way of looking at things. So it was not like, you know, bang on the head of the person, but this is how we processed, which is reassuring to anybody that the process was a very impartial, objective, and therefore it could be repeated in other situations. We've heard a lot over the last couple months and years about conflict resolution, about the need for dialogue between various actors who may have disagreements. Uh, what is it that the AGJA can do to help bridge some of these, uh, some of these gaps and to increase respectful dialogue? Well, first of all, on the principle of the talk about conflict management, uh, which would mean the resolution, the peace building, etc., etc., we hear a lot of people talk about that. From my own experience in places like Afghanistan or Palestine or Sudan or Somalia, is that there is a lot of talk, but there is very little practice in engaging the very people who are suffering from the conflict or who are part of the conflict. So a dialogue can only take place if it is an all stakeholder dialogue and it is guided by a common objective to resolve conflict. And unfortunately on the ground, and you said it actually at some stage in the discussion in the symposium, there are conflicting interests in trying to manage a conflict or resolve it. And so a dialogue is one way amongst many whereby you, in, you have an inclusive process where you bring people to listen to each other first, to talk to each other second, and to move forward with a solution or some solutions to their discussion. So what I'm trying to say is that it is very important to understand what a dialogue mean or means and I strongly believe that the members of the AGJA could bring in that kind of expertise because it's an independent group. It has no interest but to facilitate. Some people have suggested that there's a little bit of a, perhaps a disjuncture that when we talk about international criminal justice, we sometimes neglect human rights. You're a human rights advocate, a human rights champion, a human rights expert. How can we integrate these two 
world, human rights and international criminal justice? What can we do moving forward to, to kind of create more synergy between these two fields? I think simply to be positively ruthless about it in the sense that you should never be deterred from your real objective, i.e. sit in a meeting, yes, we listen to what the CPI or the Rome Statute say or what international law says, etc., etc. But look at that with the other mirror, which is you're doing all those things for actually upholding rights and protecting rights. Never shift from the real objective of your meeting.